Hello, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm your anchor, Heike Heike Corser. Adema Freeman is known for traveling around the country, advocating for self-governance and police accountability. When he is not on the road, he often calls Keene home. In studio tonight, we have Adema Freeman and Allie Havens. Adema, can you give us a little history about Cop Block? I'd be happy to, Heike, and thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Adamo Freeman, and uh, I helped start CopLock in uh, February of 2010 uh, with the goal of highlighting police abuses and uh, lack of accountability that comes with policing today. Uh, originally, the idea was to help highlight my story and my interactions with police uh, growing up and as an activist. Um, sadly, there's not a uh, shortage of content that uh, comes from police brutality, so we quickly learned that uh, maybe becoming a decentralized organization, which we'll talk about more later, um, would help fulfill the void. And we opened Cop Block up to be a network uh, where folks can come, share their stories, uh, network with other folks who have similar uh, experiences or maybe more skill sets through courts or with police officers, and uh, eventually hold them accountable. Things that are talked about there are like filming police officers, knowing your rights during traffic stops, consenting to search, kind of a uh, asking questions when asked questions of police officers, and uh, it's done pretty well lately. Uh, as of late, we've become uh, more uh, exhaustive in getting submitted stories in there at coplock.org slash submit. You yourself now as a viewer or person at home can submit your story or police interaction or thought on policing today there, and then, uh, we'll post it as a guest post. So folks are able to do that. There's also a contact uh, page where people can submit videos uh, of their police interactions. Uh, with today's technology, everybody pretty much has a camera with a smartphone, so we get a lot of submissions that way as well. And we have a great core of contributors, folks who have volunteered their time to uh, share their thoughts and uh, positions on police accountability on a more regular basis. So there's a contributors page if you go to coplock.org slash contributors. So recently, with all these ways to contribute to Coplock, there's been a lot of, of news coming in and a lot of people sharing stories and different thoughts. So. More recently, I've decided to start with the help of other folks, uh, Kate Egger, who's a local Keen uh, person as well, and uh, some other folks at CopLock uh, doing a CopLock.org news. And uh, recently, we did a pilot. So the idea is try to see what uh, folks are doing to share the content of CopLock and give them kind of one easy stop to show them what's been going on over the week. We cover a feature post, a video, and uh, overall police news. And, with that, we'd like to show you the uh, recent coplock.org news, the pilot that was done uh, last week. Hello, everyone. I'm Kager, and welcome to coplock.org news, brought to you by nevertakeaplea.org. If you face prosecution for a victimless crime, visit nevertakeaplea.org for more information about plea deals. Our first story comes from New York City, where the Sergeant's Benevolent Association for the NYPD issued a warning this week to those currently occupying Wall Street. As covered by George Sand, staff writer for coplock.org, Ed Mullins, president of the association, stated, Any assault on a police officer is not only punishable as a felony in the state of New York, but will also be met with a swift and certain legal action. George Sands points out in her article that much of the dangers police face on the job are self-imposed, which lends even more reason to withhold sympathy or respect with regard to the dangers of their profession. Despite the incessant whining from the media and police community about increased violence against police, officer deaths have been on the decline for the last 25 years. This also raises a valid question. Are the demonstrators able to sue for their injuries caused by the NYPD, regardless of the legality pertaining to their arrest? Or is this just another example of the double standard consistently portrayed by the NYPD? For more on this story, visit copblock.org backslash 9641. And now, here's Adamo Freeman with this week's edition of Better Than a Cop. Thanks, Kager. This week's Better Than a Cop story comes from Mentone, California, and provides an interesting twist. A woman going about her daily routine took her dogs for a walk in a nearby national forest. She returned to find an unknown and unwelcome man rummaging through her house. Instead of calling the police and waiting for them to save her, the woman armed herself with a can of bear spray, which is five times stronger than police-issued pepper spray and normally used to protect people from bears. She sprayed the intruder, and he fled in pain. Shortly thereafter, the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department was called to an automobile accident. The occupant, later identified as Lucian Day, 
Santiago, reeked of pepper spray, and had random valuables inside his car. Aware of the recent robbery, Lucian was detained for questioning. While going through the booking process, the Sheriff's Department learned that Daigle is employed by the Los Angeles Police Department as a sergeant, which means this courageous homeowner not only protected herself and her home from a burglary, but also outed a bad cop in the process. Again, proving that police aren't able to fulfill their motto to protect and serve. And that's why this anonymous homeowner is this week's Better Than a Cop Story. Back to you, Kager. In other police-related news, Occupy Oakland protesters faced off with the police state this past week. Police in riot gear fired tear gas and rubber bullets at protesters. Police even fired at people who were attempting to help those injured by the attack. 24-year-old Scott Olson was one of the individuals injured, suffering a fractured skull from police projectile. This attack came after CopBlock.org reported that state and local police in Albany, New York, refused orders to forcefully remove Occupy protesters. A department memo from the chief states, At this time, I have no intention of assigning officers to monitor, watch, videotape, or influence any behavior that is conducted by our citizens peacefully demonstrating in Academy Park. In the event we are required to respond to a crime in progress or a reported crime, we will do so in the same manner that we do on a daily basis. If only Oakland and all other police departments nationwide took the same action towards peaceful protest as Albany has, then no one, police officer or protester, would have to fear being harmed. And millions of dollars wouldn't be spent monitoring peaceful people about the government's incapabilities. I'm Kager, and thanks for watching copblock.org news. Until next time, remember, badges don't grant extra rights. Wow, that was awesome. I love Kager. If you'd have Isn't she nice? She is awesome. Um, so, Demo, you mentioned earlier that Cop Block was about uh, having police more accountable. What do you hope to achieve uh, with this new accountability? Do you just want to capture them doing their job, or are you hoping to influence their behavior in some way? Um, I'm just hoping to educate folks. Um, you know, Coplex is a decentralized organization, so whatever folks feel is necessary to gain that message is what I advocate they do. Um, all too often, when you're trying to get police accountability yourself through an agency, it's you versus the, whole, the whole entire police department. So that's difficult. Coplex is meant with call floods, the YouTube channels, its network, to level that playing field. So now if you, you know, as we advocate a lot of folks through there, um, film the police and all your interactions with them. You start there, you get the double standard or lack of response from them, and then you highlight that, you do a call flood, and maybe we can get them to, if not do things right, or be more accountable, so. So it's not only about holding them accountable, sort of making a case against their actions. Or document their actions. They're public officials who are who claim to work for you, serve you, and protect you. And, you know, if you watch them or really break down some of their actions that a police officer does in their daily uh, deeds, you probably wouldn't feel that way. I mean, if you ask folks, do you feel safe when an officer is in your rearview mirror while you're driving? Oh, you know, seven, eight out of ten will tell you no. So. Interesting. Um, so what, you said it was a decentralized organization. What does that mean? Well, the centralized organization, when I first started CopLock, it was just going to be a place to share my story. I've had uh, interactions with police officers. I'm a victim of the war on drugs. Uh, I then faced some harassment, and so I was trying to hold that officer accountable and found out what it was like. So I was really going to have CopLock be like my story and highlight some other cases. Um, sadly, like I said before, there's not a lack of police accountability stories. So we decided to create a network and morph it from just a, a personal blog to a network where people can help each other gain police accountability. So decentralized organization, we with, you know, there are like domain names to own and things like that, but with as little uh, steps as possible, allow people to post on the YouTube channel, um, share their, in, their story with police interactions via the blog or whatever means they want on the Facebook. Um, and that way folks can, you know, use the network. There's over 14,000 fans at Facebook, 5,000 hits a day about on the website. and if you have an idea of what policing should be or some problem with how policing is done today, share it here. The readers could critique you, maybe help you get involved. You can join up with other folks who feel the same way and try to make some change. So really anyone can contribute, but who are the main contributors of CopBlock? Who are the ones actually out there providing content? Well, anyone can contribute. Right now, I mean, uh, myself, Pete Ayer, uh, do a lot of the video work. There's a good core of writers like uh, George Sands, Paula uh, Carter, um, Brett 
um, Perry helps out there a lot, and quite a few others. You can go to coplock.org slash contributors to see those. These are folks who decided to volunteer their time and write their views on policing or of stories on policing throughout the week um, at Coplock. And uh, so that's a good help to have a, a different perspective there because we're, you know, we're all pretty much on the same line, but it's good to have a different perspective. Like I, I said in the intro too, our submissions, guest posts, uh, have really kicked up as well. And it's, it's sad to see sometimes with these stories that come in with people that interact with folks, but it's good to get them out there again for perspective because really all we're trying to be at Coplock is advocate that a camera is a way to protect you. Uh, there are issues with policing today. Here are maybe some solutions we feel let us know what you, th you think and have the educational discussion of, like, hey, here are the facts, here's what happens, and what can we do to fix it? Right, just trying to get the message out, th message out there. Mm -hmm. And um, I've noticed that a lot of people really like to buy your merchandise, your uh, hoodies, and um, you guys have hats and obviously T-shirts. And uh, I know we sell them at Corner News, so you know anyone in Keene that likes that website, they can totally come and pick one up there. Because it's really about just sort of getting the website out there so that people know where they can post these things and see them so that you know that that's what it's all about is just having it um, out in the open. Yeah, I mean, Coplock is one of the products I'm involved in, but an another way to kind of keep some of these things going, the website and some of the products we do traveling around in the RV or cutting up video, storing it, and all the other expenses that come with it, uh, a lot of it is donation-based, so we like to thank people who support uh, coplock.org and its contributors by sending them swag, nice. and you know, folks can get that as well. That's awesome. Um, is the feedback you get from the website and the different tactics you guys use generally positive or negative? Um, you know, it's, it's a good mix. Um, Coplock has seemed to become popular amongst law enforcement, which I'm really glad to see because we are, uh, Coplock itself is a decentralized organization, but a lot of times folks who are involved with Coplock are um, accused of being cop haters and we're not, you know, everyone that I know that is associated with Coplock, to the best of my knowledge, is, um, pr you know, pro-freedom. They uh, value humanity just as much as any other regardless of your job. And a lot of the points that people try to make through Coplock is that the uh, privatization of the service of protection could be better done through the free market without some of these uh, privacy evasive militaristic tactics that the police are using today. So Right. And um, my last question would be, what, what in your subjective opinion should a cop be? Should a cop be? Well, it should just be like provided like any other good or service, you know. Um, it could be, that, that could be different to everybody else. A cop could be somebody you hire to run the surveillance system at your home, call, if you call them for a break-in. Uh, maybe they monitor your store to make sure you chase down the person who just shoplifted from your uh, building but, um, or business. Um, so it just depends. I think individuals should be free to choose what type of prote protection they want and that no individual or group of individuals have the right to force a certain type of protection on a person. Right, so, so people that are cops now or are thinking about being cops, um, you would hope would, you know, there might be like competing agencies that they would, you know, just if I uh, wanted my, my trade, I could go to different companies uh, it wouldn't be, you know, the one company I'd go to for my town. There's different competing agencies right. which you could be involved in. Most uh, officers that I've talked to will agree that the biggest deterrent of crime is a police officer's presence. Um, I'd like to break that down a little more, and it's just a, a person with a gun who's committed to protecting an area. So if that's the answer, is to put a cop on every corner, well then let's just get rid of the government's police and let every business hire these police officers, if that's really the best, if that's the safest way. Um, the cost that goes with that police officer can be directed to that individual business and or business and if they start doing things that someone doesn't agree with, you know, we can stop paying for that service and, and hold them accountable. <laughs> but cop clock <coughs> is used primarily just to share the stories. These are the personal views that I think that policing can be done today. Excellent. Heike? Our second video tonight <coughs> comes out of Philadelphia <coughs> and from Freeman TV. Derek J. Freeman is the technical director of the show, and one of his projects includes Freeman TV. In this episode of Freeman TV, Derek is on the streets of Philadelphia interviewing individuals who are taking part in the Occupy movement. The scene is a windy day with hints of storm clouds at Occupation Philadelphia. While most tents in the movement close down their outreach efforts, the Truth, Freedom, Prosperity tent hangs a sign inviting occupiers to come inside for hot tea. Not really a tent at all, the Truth Freedom Prosperity Station is an 18-foot-long structure 
which can comfortably house a handful of people at a time. It is made of wood, foam, and carpet, and is outfitted with heaters, lanterns, and a teapot. It's from here that TFP volunteers distribute hot tea to guests, while other groups make lists of demands from paper-thin collapsing tents this group consistently offers valuable ideology in a comfortable setting. Uh, this is the Truth, Freedom, Prosperity warming station. People came here. I had a lot of good conversation from heated discussion about whether or not Ron Paul is a racist to a natural law and our inherent freedoms. Have you been inside this warming station? I have, and I love it. I, I love here. what they've done here because they had a, a tent and they, they were doing a lot of talking that antagonized some people here because of the Ron Paul for President signs. Progressives should take another look at Ron Paul. Ron Paul is committed to ending foreign wars of aggression, to ending the shadow government of the Federal Reserve that prints money at will. They have emphasized the important areas where we do agree and they have reached out to their neighbors here at Occupy Philadelphia. The most prominent sign you see on their tent today is, come on in, it's warm inside. I've learned more about how other people uh, are thinking and what their perspectives and paradigms are and how to relate to those uh, without you know, smashing them right there and, 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 and leaving them either really pissed off at me or, or just confused. I am part of a team that uh, has been occupying down here 24 hours a day, seven days a week from the beginning of Occupation Philadelphia. The team is Truth, Freedom, Prosperity. We're a meetup.com group that originally started off as a 9-11 truth group, but we have evolved. We now focus on promoting the ideals of uh, self-ownership, individual sovereignty, and the sanctity of personal property. My body is my property. The state did not get my DNA to this point in time and space. My ancestors did. And the state wants to place their hands, their control, over me, the natural born being that I am. And anyone who doesn't own, control their own bodies is a slave. And I will resist slavery with everything that I have. The Constitution is not the source of the rights, but in fact enshrines the rights. We, the people, have allowed it a, a horrible erosion. So what's in it for you to spread this message of liberty? Love and peace. And also I believe that this Occupy movement is probably the last best chance that we have of any peaceful revolution. As the global war machine grinds on, killing people and stealing the stuff from under their feet for corporate interests. As the global police state grinds on and frisks us as we get off of trains as well as on them and wants to pat my daughter down to get on a plane to go see her grandmother because she might be a terrorist. When in fact this is a bunch of concocted bullshit for mass mind control. The mainstream media wanted to ignore this. That our group TFP has served about 500 cups of tea thus far. And how many tons of food? A little over two tons as of today. It's all fair trade, uh, organic fruits, vegetables, meats, cheeses, and breads. The Quaker Kitchen is, is running the that aspect of it. So I mean, I, I kind of align myself with the Quakers. Quakers are liberty loving. This group, Truth, Freedom, Prosperity, is in this for the long haul. We're really working to foster open-minded conversation and facilitate uh, cross-ideological bridges. Our camp was vandalized and burglarized in the middle of the night when a, while our volunteer was sleeping. People stealthily stole 100% of our ideology, two-thirds of our food and water, and then took a hot steaming dump in the center of our canopy for our volunteer to clean up in the morning. Uh, we are not going to be shooed away. TruthFreedomProsperity.org, meetup.com, survive and thrive Philadelphia. As occupations around the world prepare for winter, Philadelphia's foothold just got stronger.
The Truth Freedom Prosperity Group offers blueprints so that others can build their own low-cost warming stations. Reporting for Freeman TV, this is Derek J. Freeman. I love seeing that uh, Liberty people coming out to an Occupy event with a nice structure and everyone else is in tents and they've got this, you know, they know how to do it. They're giving, they're selling their ideas by, you know, providing stuff that people want like warmth and food and drink. Right. As an advocate of a person for, as an advocate for self-government, um, I love the Occupy's uh, ability to show folks how without mandatory rules and regulations and a bunch of guys in costumes with guns on their hips running around mm -hmm. that uh, spontaneous order can pr produce a civilized society. So, right. you know, 500 cups of tea, I think he said, and a couple tons of food with no regulations. You know, if they were getting people sick or the tea was bad, they wouldn't have as many cups out. But I know, it surprises me that they said that people were trashing their stuff because, you know, if I was one of the people there, I don't, you know, I wouldn't really care that, if I have to listen about Ron Paul, you know, for 10 minutes while I have tea, I'm not gonna go and trash their place because, you know, it's just, isn't, isn't that what the Occupy Movement's about, is sharing ideas and, uh, you know, right. discuss, if, you know, you argue with someone about it, isn't that even the pro-democracy uh, people that believe in representation, then if someone disagrees with them, then they should be open to hearing about it. You would think. Um, my experience, I've been to probably f three or four Occupies, um, especially in the larger cities, like even New York. Um, it's not so much that they share the same ideas, it's just that they all share uh, dissent or some sort of displeasure for government at this moment. A lot of them also aren't even mad that government exists or that government is stealing from you. They're mad that they're not in possession of the government's gun and it's right to steal from others. Mm -hmm. So um, it's definitely a valid point. I just think that I wouldn't be as sure as I am maybe at, in some places here in the free state um, where my stuff wouldn't be damaged or you can leave your bicycle outside unlocked. Sure. Um, there isn't as many you know, guarantees. So there might be some people that are mad and just like the government does itself or that is portrayed on the media, violence is the solution a lot of people go to. Uh, if they see something they're not comfortable with or that scares them, they destroy it. Um, that's some of the basis for wars. That's the basis for the government's war on drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, It scares the pharmaceutical industry, the prison industry, industrial complex, and so what do they do? They attack it. So. Yeah, I, I thought it was great that he said that we're not going to be shooed away, that I don't know how I would react if that happened to me. If I go out to a peaceful protest and you know some people trash my my stuff, that would be really. Uh, I think that would that would make me want to leave. But the fact that they're still there, still spreading the mes message to people that aren't going to be that way, is encouraging. Yeah, absolutely. Perseverance builds character, and just like it seems in this video uh, that Derek covered very well, um, it's paid off. So you know they they understood that maybe they were really hard with their message and more listen to us, listen to us mm -hmm. with all their signs around and they've scaled it back, learned again, highlighting uh, spontaneous order or free market with, you know, people are always worried, well, who will do this or who will regulate that or people will be running around crazy uh, doing whatever they want. No, people have incentive due, due to voluntary interactions to correct things. Right. And I've noticed that some of the videos from some of the Occupy events that because I think the way some of them work is the Occupy people come to a city and then they try to start an event. And uh, in Occupy DC, I was noticing in a lot of the videos that there are people that come around and try to organize everyone and tell them what to do. And a lot of people don't like that. And it's weird for the locals because they're you know, sitting here saying, I've been here, I've, I'm homeless right. or I'm here every day. You know." you can't make me go to your uh, General Assembly or right. stuff I, like that. I just happened to be in Wisconsin during the start of uh, Occupy Milwaukee, and it was f different to hear how they, their General Assembly made some rules, and you could tell that there was some folks that were working through the political system, there were some union people, and so some of the rules got made, and then here in New Hampshire, they were trying to do some of the more similar things, but no one could agree, so they just agreed not to have any stance. So right. it's definitely different and interesting. Do you think it's better to, to do it this <coughs> way, to have it so that you know everyone just sort of does their own thing, or do you think that it could be beneficial to have some sort of organization where everyone goes to the same meetings, or you know if you're part of this, then you have you're with us, or or you're not? I mean, I'm down with voluntary organizations. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how like Coplock, 
um, is a perfect example, a decentralized organization that thrives. Yes, uh, some people have assumed certain roles that they do daily, volunteer, and people have like allowed me to schedule their posts, or they have the freedom to do it themselves, but they understand that if we space it out, there's content over time instead of rushes one day. So it's their spontaneous order, you know, what works best for the overall thing, and people come and go, and so I don't know if it's better one way, I just think, I'm not against people getting together to organize to do things. I'm against them being forced to. Mm -hmm. So I don't see it either way, just as long as it doesn't become like controlling. If somebody comes in and says, I want to oversee all this, then I have a problem. Right, yeah. And <coughs> you know, I, I think that it's, it's good to have all the cameras there, because I noticed that even the ones that, I always thought of filming everything was sort of, I, I was introduced to that through the Liberty Movement, but you know, all the other movements seem to be sort of like catching on and picking, uh, picking that up and filming their interactions with people, um, doing activism and, and everything. So, I mean, it's good to see that. If you know, you could bring any kind of message to those people. It'd be it'd be good to have a, um, you know, like the cop block thing. No, right. Transparency. <coughs> excuse me. Transparency is important. So the camera is our, our biggest weapon. It's uh, what we're able to do to show folks what the uh, government's doing. <laughs> I agree. <coughs> um, <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> Take a breather. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I don't know. This the Occupy movement is, uh, I think, <coughs> overall a, a good thing because it's just good to see people being active. Or <coughs> for a while, it seemed like no one really had an opinion, or that you know everyone was. Uh, I, I I've heard them called sheep. People that don't really pay attention to what's going on or to seem to be okay with it, with everything going on, no matter, you know, what the government tries to do. So it's good to see people uh, taking notice and taking a stance. Uh, I, there's a lot of things that people out there say that I don't quite agree with or I, they're coming from it from a fundamental stance that I, I can't really get behind, but I mean, that's okay because you can't expect everyone to be on board with your message. You just have to try to persuade them. I'm sorry, I'm choking here, but <laughs> <coughs> I couldn't agree more. It's uh, great to see folks all across the country with the Occupies, even though they have a different message, they still come out to you know agree to display that message in a peaceful manner and have uh, addressed their recourse with those that are displeasing them, which in my opinion is the government. Thank you for watching tonight. Head to freekeen.com for the archive of this show and past shows. To contact us, send an email to tv at freekeen.com. I'm your anchor, Heike Corser, saying good night, Keen. Are you?